Hello and welcome to the assembly video for the puzzle puzzle box. I'm your host, Leisure Luke, and I'm gonna use my phone as a mirror. <laughs> Hello, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll just be behind the camera showing you how to assemble all of the parts. Straight away, we have two of these. These are the wheel locks, and uh, there are two in the print files. One says it's for a 150% plus size print. That's this one with the thinner fins. And the reason is, if you start printing this one at 150% size, which is the normal wheel lock, uh, when it gets bigger, these fins get stiff and it makes it hard to spin the middle wheel. So if you're going with 100% size, use the original piece. If you're going with 150% size or 200% size, you're gonna to wanna to print the, the one labeled as such. So I'm gonna do a 150% size assembly. That's what all the other pieces are printed as, so I don't need this. All right, to start this assembly, we just need to start by solving the puzzle. So I like to, to lay this piece down. This is um, piece eight. Uh, it's the biggest of all the pieces, and it goes down in the center. Colors don't make any difference with this puzzle box, so choose whatever colors you want. Uh, none of them are gonna help anybody figure out how to solve it. And then when you're putting these pieces together, some will slide through from the back, others will slide through from the front. As you can see, this one won't slide through the front, so it has to be slid through the back. Um, I'm assuming everybody is gonna wanna do the puzzle part themselves. But if you did keep track of how your print went, you can choose to just put them in their order. They're numbered like, like this. I'll show a picture of how they're numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and what we're doing now is assembling just sort of the big U shape. And the big U shape This was what we need to do first, so, so far so good. Um, I, of course, know the colors of mine. If yours are getting really, really tight, it seems like there's no way they're gonna slide. Double check for burrs. I found a burr like this on one of my pieces and just cut it off with a razor blade. Once you have your, sort of your U shape of puzzle pieces sitting there, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it alone. So, so there are two that I haven't put in yet. One is this, this is the five piece, and this is the other one. This is the two piece. I've printed the two, four, six, and eight piece puzzle pieces at a smaller layer height. I, I went with 0.16 layer height, and then all the, well, all the odd number pieces are printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And the reason is because then when they slide against each other, because the layer heights are slightly different, if they were the same, they would get locked every layer. But because they're slightly different, uh, it doesn't really line up. And, and it just helps the pieces shuffle against each other because most of them are buttons and have to, have to slide. I've also noticed with all these puzzles that they just get better over time. These, these pieces get a little bit better at sliding um, I'm sure as it sort of sands down the individual pieces, it, it seems to be good for the puzzle. So if everything seems stiff at first, that might not be the, the worst thing. All right, here's the inner wheel and the wheel lock. This just pushes through. We're gonna set the arrow in the 12 o'clock position and we're gonna set this little divot on the wheel lock in about the 10, 30, or 11 o'clock position. That's because on our five piece, we have a matching little groove and those need to line up. So when we put our five piece on, that'll be a press fit into the wheel lock. Now we can drop our inner wheel assembly straight into our puzzle box. And the pieces will sort of flex to the side to allow that to enter. If your pieces don't flex enough, you may be over extruding a little because there should be enough built-in tolerance. Once our inner wheel is sitting in there, we can now press it all together with our five piece. Our five piece slides in from the front. 
Make sure it aligns with the rest of the pieces. And then go ahead and give it a squeeze, and that'll be a pretty tight fit for a new build. Mine's been taken apart, we'll put back together a few times, so it's a little looser. Um, but now all this should basically be together. These pieces shouldn't fall out from one another anymore. All right, we can set that aside and grab our base. This is the base. The front is the side with the two little posts and the back has just one post. From the front, we're gonna install our four spring and our six spring. This is the four spring. It's got these wiggles on the top and that will go in on the left. And that piece should be pretty tight and you'll probably want a needle nose plier to get it uh, all the way flush down in there. I actually like to just set down, take my pliers and press. You should see it sits in there pretty flush. If you need to take this piece out, poke, poke through the back and then you won't break the piece taking it in and out. But that'll be a pretty tight fit. Now we're going to do the same for the six spring. Make sure that the posts are facing uh, inward as you're assembling this, so don't assemble it like this. You want that top post facing inward. And then we're going to do the same thing where we use our pliers to get that nice and tight. Perfect. There we go. Now we're ready to drop our assembly in and start sliding it in. You're gonna have to push the springs a little bit to the sides as you get this wiggled down and then you'll start lining up all of the holes with all of the springs. So on the side, this piece has a hole in it and that will need to get aligned to that spring. But right now we can't because the bottom springs aren't in. You can see that's the holes these have to go through, so we'll push it forward. And this, this is a little frustrating, but don't force anything too hard and it'll all fall into place. There one is in. There's the other. This fell into its hole. This fell into its hole. And then last we have this piece, and this has fallen into its hole. And some of them may need a little bit of a squeeze to make sure they're all the way in. But you should have one, two, three holes filled on the bottom and one hole on each side. Now that everybody's uh, aligned, we can add the outer wheel. The outer wheel will face uh, forward. The arrow will point towards the face of the puzzle. And that will just slide uh, here, but we need to push this piece in to give it the space to slide in. And then it'll rest right on that same center hole as everything else. Another piece we're gonna add at this time is the flush piece. The flush piece will go in the same hole the, through the center of the puzzle. And then we're gonna make sure it's in its grooves on either side of the puzzle box here and press down as far as it'll go. Next, we can slide this number two piece in on the top. If you put it in earlier, it, it, it is one piece that can keep falling out. It'll just it'll keep sliding. Uh, there is a hole on top, so this piece is permanently affixed when you add the lid, which we're now ready to do. The lid goes right over the top. Make sure that the puzzle is all the way um, up and not down to either side. And this should drop right on without too much force. If you're not aligning things properly, double check your back flush piece. As you can see here, I have it uh, quite aligned. So to align it there and there. And you might feel a little spring holding it back. That's because of these top two springs. That two piece fell out. Push the two piece in and make sure that your, your hole is aligned. And then make sure that this spring finds the correct hole. 
and make sure that this spring here goes into the three piece. So this spring goes into the one piece, the spring goes into the three piece. Next, if everything seems correct and your your backs here are all aligned these are the most important pieces of areas to check because they're both frequently the ones i do wrong um then you are ready to put in your clips colors colors don't matter with the clips just like the rest of the puzzle box these are just there to hold the puzzle together they're not meant to be removed during the solve um, so they should be pressed in hard enough where somebody can't just remove it with their fingers. I, I've taken these particular clips in and out a few times, so they're going in with my hands, but the first two or three times you put them in and take them out, uh, you're going to need the pliers. And then you can just, just give them a little pressure with the pliers to make sure they're fully seated in the puzzle box. A um, couple tips when you go to remove these is use the pliers and go this way. Because of the way they're printed, this, this gets them in and out pretty easily. Um, if you start trying to take them in and out with your pliers this way, you're gonna just kind of fray the fray the print lines. So taking the clips in and out like this usually saves you a clip. Once those are all squeezed tight, your puzzle is ready to be played with. Um, push this eight piece in and slide this wheel all the way to the left. And now the puzzle is ready to be solved. Uh, basically, you have to align that arrow this arrow and this arrow once again once all three arrows are aligned you'll be allowed to push this back piece flush once it's flush with the rear that's when the entire puzzle box uh, for the final final mega assembly will be allowed to be unlocked um, this will be the only kind of piece holding the interference that's it. If you like this video, give me a like. Please go like the thing on Thingiverse. That's going to be best for my channel. That'll drive the most people uh, to see the thing on Thingiverse and inspire me the most to make more puzzle boxes. The final assembly with all five puzzles, well, the four puzzle boxes and the frame together will be out in uh, a couple of months. I'm going to send some in advance to a few people to hopefully create videos for to draw up some excitement. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Give me a like, hit subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video.